For those who have not watched the first episode of the series, my entire journey had started from Manavai Siddha in my village in Kanyakumari district. He was one of the initiated disciples of Sadguru Sri Brahma. My grandmother had spoken a lot about him, his story, where he came from, what he did, etc. In trying to document the place where Manavai Siddhar met Sadguru Sri Brahma, Vijay Kumar and I set off to the mountain near Nagar Koil where the cave was located. We took the help of a college friend Kishore who lives in Nagar Koil. This is the last mountain in the Western Ghats range. From here on a clear day, one can see as far as Kanyakumari, the land's end. In the 80s, I would come here as a child with my family. We had built a tiny cottage, a kutir, to stay. We had planted many mango and amla saplings and also some medicinal plants. These medicinal plants were put to some great use by my grandfather from my mother's side. He was a Siddha and an astrologer. I still remember going up to a cave which was 30 minutes climb through the dense forest. This cave had a large space where up to 15 people could stay and it had an altar with a built platform. When we had attempted to revisit this place the first time, we could only reach halfway. We had found the kutir in a very dilapidated condition. Time had taken its toll on the stone walls and miscreants had removed some stones to build their own structures. Besides, we had also discovered that it would not be possible to climb any further due to the thick growth of trees and bushes. So we had turned back a little disappointed. Two years later, we did succeed in going to the cave because of a miraculous intervention. But that is an adventure story for another day with more about Manavai Siddha's association with Sadhguru Sri Brahma. Through his ongoing research, Vijay Kumar started coming across references about disciples who were directly initiated by Sadhguru Sri Brahma. And the list was endless. It was like going through a rabbit hole and discovering a continuous list of new names from different regions of the state who had been initiated by him. And in getting to know the disciples and their stories, we came in touch with other interesting aspects of Sadhguru Sri Brahma that had not come to our knowledge before. Some disciples were so fiery that they took Sadhguru's teachings and practices deep into their heart and put his work into action. And what a wave they created. If we were to research and interview all the initiates' descendants, this would be a never-ending series. We discussed it with Saundaranna, our inspiration and guide for making of this series, and he advised us to focus our research on those direct disciples who were with Sadhguru Sri Brahma and who has contributed to his work after he left. So we narrowed down our focus accordingly. In episode 7, we had described a certain meditation process in detail which Sadhguru had conducted with two other disciples. It was a situation in Nilgiris where Sadhguru Sri Brahma instructed Guruvel Swami to stand and gaze steadily at him. And he has also instructed another disciple, Narayan Swami, to gaze at Guruvel Swami simultaneously. This meditation that Sadhguru Sri Brahma was conducting in the Nilgiris had similarities to Samyama. Samyama is described by Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras as a process which is done by the Guru with close and advanced disciples who have gone through sufficient preparation. It is also described as a synthesis of Dhyana, Dharana and Samadhi. When practiced and perfected, it is said to bring attainments which are Siddhis and perfections, not for material gain but for a deeper perception of the world. Patanjali calls it 
the dropping of all cognitive obscurity. In this process, a guru is said to transmit all his knowing to his disciples without talking. It involves great subtlety along with a strong preparation of the other steps of Ashtanga Yoga. We had some old and new information on Guruvel Swami, which we are covering in this episode, but had almost nothing on Narayana Swami. However, Vijay Kumar eventually provided the missing link to this aspect too, with his dedicated ongoing research. One of the important disciples initiated by Sadhguru Sri Brahma was Narayana Sami Chetiyar. I was looking for him under the surname Chetiyar, but uh, this was a mistake. Finally, I found him under Narayan Sami Naidu. Actually, I had overlooked an important point. In those days, uh, anyone who was involved in commerce was called Chetiyar. Today, it is a caste and also a community name. This gave me the clue that his surname could have been different. Because of his profession, I was able to identify and trace the family here in Nilgiris. In fact, we are about to meet his grandson, Patabianna. Namaskar. Please sit. Those days, my grandfather was heavily inclined towards spirituality. This Nilgiri area has a large population of Baduga community even today. They were a very devoted lot, but uh, they didn't know the procedure or uh, methods of doing pujas. So, my grandfather taught them how to do the puja rituals. He also created a bhajan group for them. He would go around helping people like this. Sadhguru had come to Uti and uh, somebody informed my grandfather. He immediately went to meet Sadhguru. At that time, the area beyond Mariamman temple was a part of Uti lake. Now it is a race course. Those days, the winter used to be very cold. Today, the climate has changed drastically because of the random cutting down of trees. Anyway, so my grandfather went to meet him there. When he arrived, he found Sadhguru sitting in Padmasana and floating on water with his eyes closed. My grandfather did not want to disturb him, so he waited at the edge of the lake. When Sadhguru finished his meditation and came out of the lake, my grandfather went and touched his feet. Then he told Sadhguru, I came to see you and to take your blessings. Sadhguru placed his hand on my grandfather, Narayana Swami Naidu's head, and initiated and blessed him. We got to hear many stories about my grandfather from my father when we were children because our grandfather passed away quite early in 1956. He took around 200 people on a pilgrimage from Kothagiri to Pandaripuram. This was his bhajan group. After the darshan of Panduranga at Pandaripuram, they all left to return by train. As the train approached Airlur, it met with an accident. Apparently, a flash flood that had occurred the night before had washed the bridge away and the train submerged into the river in the darkness. Many people died in that accident of 1956, including my grandfather. Lal Bahadur Shastri was the railway minister at that time. He resigned from his position taking responsibility for the train accident. The villagers around Aralur recovered the dead bodies and buried them in the same area. They also erected a memorial for them there. So all these stories were told to us by our father when we were about 12. Stories about the train accident, about the initiation, and other details of our grandfather. As we grew up, we forgot these stories. We even forgot our grandfather. 
much later when i started this factory and shop a swami ji came here one day he said they were doing annadanam for sadguru's guru puja and requested me to donate 75 kg rice i was shocked and asked him whether it was the same sadguru we knew he showed us the photograph and confirmed it was the same and the sadguru correct told me the photo of him kamchar he gave me a photo which i have kept with me ever since sinna vayasla adu correct ah yavu vandha kaalathil avaru vandu inge when sadguru stayed here at mariamman temple my grandfather had witnessed sadguru separate his arms and legs and then join them together again kapparam meendum vandu apdiye otti kolradhu அந்த மாதிரி எல்லாம் ஒரு அதிசயங்கள் நடந்திருக்குது அப்போ வந்து இந்த மாரியம்மன் கோயிலுக்கு அவர் வந்து அங்கே விஜயம் செஞ்சு சாமி கும்பிட்டதா சொல்கிறாங்க அவர் பற்றி தகவல்களை எங்கள் தாத்தா வந்து மை கிராண்ட் ஃபாதர் ஹேட் ரிலீஸ்ட் அ ஃபியூ புக்ஸ் அபவுட் ஹிஸ் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்சஸ் வித் சத்குரு he had 100 of books and my father looked after them we were a joint family then later when we split up these books were neglected and eaten by termites and insects and not having much awareness about the significance of these books they were thrown away that is tragic if those books had been preserved we would have known many things about satguru we lost a great possibility adu theriyaradhukku vaippu illamal poyiruchu The one disciple whose name is repeated in every ashram in the Nilgiris and almost everywhere else is that of Sri Guruvel Swami. He is from Ilankad, a village located between Trichy and Tanjavur. You may recollect that we had briefly spoken about him in episode 7 of season 1. This time we are heading for Ilankad equipped with more information. We went to Elankadu with the sole purpose of visiting the Ganesha shrine that Guruvel Swami had built in his village. The dots connected smoothly since the land had been registered under Sadguru Rajayoga Sangam and records showed of Guru Pujas happening regularly in the past. But when we reached there something unexpected unfolded. We found a different small shrine for a Ganesha deity although the temple structure seemed relatively new. There was also a Naga shrine with intricately carved Naga idols and a linga. The caretaker told us that the original Ganesha temple was right behind this and took us through some thorny bushes to it. The temple was in a dilapidated condition and was shrouded with wild foliage. The little boys who were excitedly running in front of us as our guides called it the Siddhar temple. When Vijay Kumar had first seen it in a photograph a few years back, the front walls had been intact and it had made him curious about what was inscribed on it. But since the engraved wall was now beneath the debris, he was unable to learn much. Perhaps later when they clear this up we may get some more information about this place fortunately one of the engraved stones that had been recovered by the caretaker had been placed in the new shrine right at the front it bears a couplet from tayu manavar songs according to swami chidbavananda who had met sadguru shri brahma as a teenager in palani these songs were sadguru's favorite when you make me a tool to serve and be useful to people bliss and mukti will come to me on its own the caretaker led us through the debris into the temple the sanctum was empty it used to have the ganesha deity but now it is in the new shrine we could see om written in tamil drawn behind on the wall in the sanctum the garbhagraha or the innermost sanctum had a conical empty space right above then the caretaker said something which sent a shiver down our spine எந்த இடத்துல அது மூடிடுச்சு அது ஹி மென்ஷன் அண்ட் அண்டர் கிரவுண்ட் கேவ் ஜஸ்ட் அவுட் சைட் த டெம்பிள்
He said it had an underground chamber inside which has a raised platform for a person to sleep and also a place to sit and meditate. We could clearly see that this is exactly where Sadhguru Sri Brahma must have come and been in Samadhi. Of course, we don't know for how long or exactly when this could have happened but our guess is it must have been after the interrupted Samadhi at Bellanore. It is very much possible that Guruvel Swami's first encounter with Sadhguru may have happened here. He had travelled to meet Sadhguru Sri Brahma in places like Trichy, Palani and Vellanur. After that, he may have decided to stay and travel with Sadhguru in the Nilgiris. He is among those few disciples who were there during Sadhguru's final departure in 1920 in Vellangiri Hills. As we left Elankadu, we saw a few huge lingams lying in the fields and one was even by the roadside. The local villagers' explanation was that there were groups of families who lived here and used to make these lingams and avudayars and these are their unfinished works. We don't know if these are in any way connected to Sadhguru Sri Brahma. There is nobody in this village who identifies here as relatives of Guruvel Swami either. Guruvel Swami had probably shifted to live and travel with Sadhguru Sri Brahma around 1915 and stayed with him till Sadhguru's departure in 1920. We see references of him being in Nilgiris and Trichy with Sadhguru. In Edapalli, Sadhguru Raja Yoga Sangam was created in the presence of Sadhguru. After Sadhguru's final departure, Guruvel Swami travelled to all these places where Sadhguru had been in Samadhi or stayed for a period of time. He had set up procedures for the annual Guru Puja and Annadanam in every place. He had also established the Sadhguru Raja Yoga Sangam everywhere. He continuously travelled, stayed in all these places and continued to give initiations to people. Although the numbers vary from different sources, the number of places where the ashrams were set up ranged from 72 to 90. I was very young, barely 12-13. I remember running happily behind Swami wherever he went in the village. We used to hold his hand and roam everywhere. He would go to many places, Bereti and other villages and eventually come back to our house. He would sleep overnight at our place and then leave again for another place the next day. I don't know all the facts, but my father was always with him. He would travel with him to Balyar, Palani and stay with him for 30-40 days at a stretch. Guru Vail Swami used to sit by the fire he would make in a pit. When the children complained they didn't have money, he would take the embers of the fire with his bare hand and hand them to the children as coins. He had also told some farmers to sow the embers in the field along with the potato crop and it turned into a bumper yield. In this way, many miracles were witnessed and experienced. When Guru Natha stayed at our house in Bikati, he would burn fire in a havan gund. He would also make a medicinal paste that we were asked to consume for our health. He used to stay with us for many days and then climb further to higher planes. My father knew him very well. Sometimes he would feed us rice along with the medicine paste. He would always build a fire and the villagers would come and gather around him. He didn't wear anything to cover his body from the cold. When he travelled, he would wear a kurta pajama. Another prominent disciple was Yen Nallusami Naidu. He met Sadhguru when he was in his early twenties. Born in 1891, he came in touch with Sadhguru Sri Brahma when he was probably 22 or 23 years old in Nilgiris. There was Nallusami Naidu who owned a petrol pump in Nuti. He was with Sadhguru Nadar. He was the one who gave me Diksha. Sadhguru had come to Uti Mariamman temple. When my father went to meet him there, he had a huge boil here. He had covered it with a muffler. The boil was broken and in a bad state. Sadhguru told him to remove the muffler. Sadhguru said one of the nine gems had come to him. He just did this and told my father to put the muffler back. He got a few spiritual instructions, received the prasadam and returned home. 
By the time he reached home, the boy had disappeared. After this, he was totally devoted to Sadguru. I have also met Guru Vail Swami. He used to come to our house. He would conduct havan and puja for 48 days. My father once told that Guru Vail Swami had been in Samadhi for 30 days. He would dress in saffron robe, chewed bitter leaves and always smiled. He chanted constantly. He wouldn't eat much, just pongal or something as simple and would sit quietly. While it seems Sadhguru Sri Brahma had initiated Guruvel Swami in the path of sannyas, for Nallu Swami Naidu, he had instructed him to get married. But throughout his life, Nallu Swami Naidu kept mentioning to his son and daughter how he wanted to take sannyas. His daughter told us one such incident which her father had shared with them. Once, my father went to Suruli with an intention to take sannyas. Guruvel Swami tried to dissuade him but he was insistent. So they left on foot. The path was difficult, full of insects and leeches. And beyond were three temples. Two of them were the Murugun Temple and the Agastya Temple. They kept walking. By the time they reached, night had fallen, but Sadhguru was not there in his cave. So they lay down to rest. Finally, Sadhguru arrived. He told my father, Your samsara is not complete yet. Go back and come later. The story goes that Sadhguru gave him suku coffee in a bowl. And as he drank it, it replenished on its own. After drinking, my father left the bowl behind. Later, Guru Vel Swami asked my father, Why did you leave that bowl behind? You could have put coins and gold in it and got a never-ending supply. Sadhguru told my father to do lots of dhanam and annadhanam. So wherever he went, he bought land and donated it for the Sangam. Bikati land, Yelanali building, all these were donated by him. In Burliyar, it was the month of Margali that he would do Anadanam. Many Badugas who were initiated by my father would do Anadanams generously. Once in Kalatti, a Baduga lost all his wealth in a legal case. He came to my father and cried. My father simply handed the Kalati land to him. Wherever he went, he would buy some land. He would install a Ganesha statue there. He would give it to the locals and say, You maintain this land and daily light a lamp. He had established 90 such places with this tradition. Nalasami Naidu was the head of this Yelanhali ashram. He built this place. The land was donated by a woman from here. The Sangha had 60 members. Gents' membership was rupees 100 and ladies' fee was rupees 60. There were 20 women at that time. I'm the only living person from them now. We decided to look into the reason why a Ganesha shrine was established in every place where Sadhguru Sri Brahma was in Samadhi or where the Sadhguru Raja Yoga Sangams were set up. One reason was that Ganesha, referred to as the one with five hands, is the first in the lineage where Sadhguru Sri Brahma is the ninth. The others being Lord Kartikeya, Agastya Muni, Guru Pita Muni, Sadguru Muni, Jaga Muni, Atmanada Muni and Sarvaloka Muni. Most are mainly familiar with the Lord Ganesha who is worshipped in temples and invoked in havans in the Agamic Hindu tradition. However, in yogic tradition, Ganesha is the deity of the first chakra in the human body, Muladhara. The 14th century lady Saint Avayar who wrote the Vinayagar Agaval on Lord Ganesha, ventures into the details about how Ganesha as a guru initiates the Kundalini, takes over the five senses and teaches the way to master the breath within the body to attain to the ultimate. It is interesting to note that there was a nominal fee collected to be a member of the Sadhguru Raja Yoga Sangam and it makes ample sense. After all, when the land is handed over for free and a powerful deity Ganesha is instilled, 
it would follow that the space would need people to be committed and disciplined setting up a membership fee inculcates a sense of belonging inclusiveness and participation by the villagers yanake ellame sadguru enbaru he would say sadguru is everything for him once putparthi sai baba had come and we welcomed him grandly with an elephant and music my father was returning from the petrol pump and i told him excitedly sai baba has come and he simply said for me it is only sadguru and he went into the house he didn't even see sai baba in today's world people are so easily distracted even by the choice of gurus they go guru shopping they try different gurus and finally end up uncommitted to a single one nallu sami naidu is an excellent example of how undeterred attention and holding on to the guru is the key to growth and progress in the path guruvel chame thanjavur la irundanga guruvel swami was in thanjavur he was returning from thanjavur to palani varupodu yama the lord of death came to take his life he was very old by that time Swami shouted at Yama, "Let me reach Palani at least." Sarah Iruda and one satta potter kang. People accompanying him heard him say these words. He reached Palani and sat on a rock. Sinna, ida kallu pare. He meditated upon Lord Muruga and left his body. Vendu iru potter kang sami. Nalli Swami vandu. Before sitting down for his final journey, he had left clear instructions that nobody will touch him till Nallu Swami arrives. Anje ar nallu. BK Madha Gill Swami were among the 5 6 people who went from there Sangathilla BK Madha Since Nallu Swami Naidu had good contacts with the officials in the collectorate they allowed the samadhi to be set up there Nallu Swami ellarave theriyo collect They got permission for the samadhi to be set and during those 6 days Gurvel Swami's body was fresh like sandalwood nothing happened to it Nallu Swami onnu agala katte The samadhi was built under my father's supervision who had gone to Palani from Nilgiris. I was in Dindugal at the time as my husband was in the customs department. My father returned late night that day all drenched and was silent. He just said that Guruvel Swami had attained samadhi and that he had built the chamber and installed the linga. My father-in-law along with few others went and built the samadhi. Since then we attend the guru puja every year on the day Guruvel Swami took samadhi. We wanted to know what kind of sadhana Sadguru Sri Brahma's disciples were doing in their lives. We asked Nallu Swami Naidu's daughter as she had grown up watching her father do the practices. My father would only eat after doing his daily puja of 2 hours and his practice which was from 6 to 8 pm. For the monthly Thiruvonam puja he would ask us to keep a glass of milk and an onion and ask us to leave and close the door. He had his own separate puja room. He had Sadguru's photo there. He would do his pujas on Thiruvonam and Pournami. We believe Sadguru came and spoke to him on those days. During Margali month he would wake us up at 4 am. We would bathe, clean the front of the house, draw a kolam, light a lamp and make the prasadam. That is how he raised us. So right from our childhood we got used to fasting, doing pujas and all those things. Our meditation mana bol satta ela ke kekuma. Om. Yes, we could hear om. We didn't go inside his room so we could only hear the sound. We stayed away as Kali and the other forms manifested themselves in him. The Badugas used to come to meet him in the room behind our petrol pump. Anyone affected by black magic or evil eye or going through any trouble came to him. When I heard that someone had an old photo of Sadhguru I went to see it it was in a damaged state I thought I could recover it but uh, they would not give it to me Finally after a lot of persuading they relented and I could recover it to make this print It is said that it is one of the original photos of Sadhguru I have now kept it safe 
Vijay Kumar showed him the old photo of Sadguru Sri Brahma that we had seen everywhere. Naan chinna payana irukum. When I was quite young, we had a shop in the market. In that shop my father had this photo on the wall. I don't know where that photo is, but uh, I remember that ohm letter on it. A chinna vayasla enga appa kadaiyila vechirpaaru. Andha photo. Nilagiri pogudilla. Yes, correct. Whatever publications were released in the Nilgiri area carried this photo of Sadhguru in books and articles. Sadhguru looks younger in that photo. But in this one, he looks a bit older. At least to me. The features are little different in both. Once when he was lying down, he said i'm done with my life and when he did his puja he smiled and said sadguru has come the very next day he fell ill and we thought we would give him saline so we decided to take him to the hospital on the way to the hospital as near the ayappa temple my father told my brother i won't go to the hospital sadguru is telling me to go home So turn the vehicle around. My brother ignored him and took him to the hospital. But the moment he reached the hospital and he was made to lie down, he was gone. My son was there too. So finally, we took him to the crematorium and built his samadhi there. Before closing it, his initiates filled it with camphor, vibhuti and salt. I was very close to my father. When he passed away, I used to cry a lot just looking at his daily things. I would also go to the graveyard almost every day. For around 30 days or so, I heard my father say, "Ma, I am not there. I have dissolved into Sadguru. Don't come here anymore." One thing became clear. after meeting the descendants of sadguru's disciples that we could not identify all the nine disciples which sadguru shri brahma had mentioned on two occasions we were only able to identify a few whom we came to know about only because they were socially active kurippitta shishyargala ivaru ortha and the photo again such as been the case with the other gurus in the past too for example when we consider the disciples of ramakrishna paramahamsa the name of swami vivekananda immediately comes to mind his guru gave him one in depth experience of samadhi and he spent the rest of his life carrying out his guru's instructions he took his guru's message to the west and worked on creating many branches of the ramakrishna order in the country However, if we dig deeper, we can know of his other disciples who were spiritually greatly accomplished like Swami Brahmananda, Swami Turiyananda, Swami Akhandananda and many more who went into samadhi periodically and did austerities in the Himalayas regularly. But we don't hear about them because they explored and excelled in the inner dimensions and withdrew from the social scenarios. it won't be fair to compare the disciples as each one takes to the path pointed and instructed by their guru but this is for sure the ones who stay in the memory of the people say 100 years down the line or those who worked in society with other people in our own context we could similarly only identify those who are actively initiating people and creating places the sangam and the buildings which stand today speak only about these disciples those who were instructed to go into an inward exploration or beyond us to track or identify yet it is equally important to acknowledge their presence and lives because it is not the physical buildings and properties which make these spaces spiritual it is also the chaitanya the energy field created by the austerities and sadhana of these disciples who walked in the footsteps of their guru sadguru shri brahma that makes these places what they are kandalla nam indraniyamma indraniyamma is in kandal 
She is 95 years old. She is the oldest in our community and knows a lot of things about Sadhguru. I feel if you go and meet her, she may have lots of new things to share with you. There was no stopping us now. We had to meet Indrani Amma and continue to discover the depths of this journey. When we found ourselves before this wise old woman who was a living library and treasure house of experience, it felt as if she was waiting to meet us to share her legacy. This meeting, as you will discover later, was what connected the dots and completed the grid of our journey.